It's your fault for not being with our son. I'm not interested in a workaholic like you. These are the words Brian, my husband of five years, said to me. I thought I had done my best to take care of both my job and family. I had no idea he felt this way until he told me. My name is Alicia Adams, a 29-year-old working in product planning for an apparel brand. I have always loved fashion since I was a child. I even made clothes with my mother on a sewing machine. After graduating from a fashion college, I'm fulfilled working for my admired brand. I have a husband of the same age and a four-year-old son. Brian, my husband, was my high school classmate. We dated once for a few months but broke up due to college entrance exams. We reconnected at a friend's party after being out of touch for a while. Finding out we worked nearby, we started dating again. Brian was a serious baseball team ace in high school, but enjoyed his university life fully. He seemed a bit shallow when I met him again, but his caring and kind nature hadn't changed. We married within a year of dating. When we announced our marriage, our parents were delighted. Oh, I feel reassured if he's marrying you, Alicia. Brian's mother said to me happily, I have a good relationship with his parents. I often visit them even when Brian isn't around. While announcing our marriage, we discovered we were pregnant. Brian was there for me throughout my severe morning sickness. It wasn't easy, but I worked up to the last minute before giving birth. Brian, who was present at the birth, shed tears of joy when our son was born. Thank you for giving birth to our son, Alicia. Let's do our best to raise our child. I, too, shed tears of joy that our son was born healthy. We named our son Steve, a name that we had discussed and liked back when we were dating in high school. After about six months of maternity leave, I returned to work. Although my colleagues were worried that it might be too soon, I couldn't stop thinking about work even during my leave. I love my family, but I also love my work. Brian said, I'll help out too, so it's okay. You should go back to work when you're ready. After all, you love your job. I have to learn from you. With this cooperation, we managed to balance our busy work lives with raising our child, and our son grew up healthy and strong. I felt more than happy with my beloved job, my husband, and our son. In my job, I often have to go on business trips. During these times, I couldn't be with Steve, and I always felt bad for Brian. But he always told me, it's perfectly fine. You want to go on your business trip, right? Go ahead. I might have taken advantage of his kindness a little, but I truly appreciate it being married to such a considerate man. Whenever I went on business trips, I would buy lots of souvenirs for Brian and our son. Brian was always helping me out, so when I was at home, I wanted him to have time to enjoy himself by going out for drinks with his friends or doing things he liked. There were times when he would stay out drinking until dawn, but I didn't say anything because I was always causing him trouble. I felt that since he let me enjoy my work as much as I liked, I wanted him to enjoy himself as thoroughly as when he was single. Our son Steve was now four years old. We may not have had as much time together as most mothers and children, but he always tells me, I love you, mommy. When I reply, and mommy loves you too, Steve, my son would smile. These were times of pure happiness. During these times, I was presented with an opportunity to go on a business trip abroad. In the company, only selected individuals are allowed to go on these trips. If I were single, I would have gladly taken the opportunity. 
but I would be away from home for about a week. This left me in a dilemma. When I talked to Brian about it, he said, That's amazing. It's a great opportunity, isn't it? Go for it. I also asked my son, Honey, would it be okay if mommy didn't come home for a week because of work? It's okay. I have daddy and his friend. If I can see you after a few sleeps, I can take it. I wondered what he meant by daddy and his friend, but I assumed he was referring to his grandparents. Ryan told me that his parents often came to our home to help out when I was not around. I planned to bring back a lot of souvenirs for them as well. With this in mind, I set off on my overseas business trip. On the final day, work finished earlier than expected, so I booked a late night flight and was due to arrive home the following morning. But I realized that if I changed to an earlier flight, I could be home by the end of the day, so I changed my flight details and returned to the US. Wanting to see Brian and Steve as soon as possible, I took a taxi, something I usually avoid, and hurried home. It was a Saturday evening, so I expected them both to be home. I rushed into the house with a ton of souvenirs, expecting to surprise them with my early return. I'm home! I shouted as I entered the house. Mommy! Welcome back! Steve came running towards me. Brian was nowhere in sight. Puzzled, I asked my son, Honey, where's Daddy? He's been out since the morning. He's coming back tomorrow. I was lonely. And his eyes welled up with tears. He must have been very lonely. I was shocked. Steve was only four years old. It was too early to leave him home alone, let alone for more than a day. What if something had happened? Steve wouldn't be able to use a phone or send an email. He probably couldn't call for help. Where could Brian have gone, leaving Steve alone? I was full of questions. I also felt angry with him. I knew he probably wouldn't tell me the truth if I asked him directly. So, pretending that I was still overseas, I called him. Hello? I'm coming back tomorrow. Where are you now? Yeah, have a safe flight back home. I'm uh, on a trip with Steve right now. We'll be back home by the time you return. He rattled off lie after lie, as expected. I was disappointed with him and hung up after saying, I see. It seemed he had been about to say something more, startled by my reaction. I hugged Steve tightly. Not only did Brian lie, but the fact that he was ready to leave our son, four-year-old son, home alone for over a day was unforgivable. Seeing Steve tearful, I thought it was impossible for me to continue my marriage with him. I gave Steve his souvenirs and cooked dinner, and we ate together. Hey, sweetie, do you know where Daddy has gone? I asked him. He answered, He's gone out with Mandy. I didn't know any woman named Mandy among our acquaintances. As far as I knew, Brian didn't have any sisters. Does Mandy come often? I asked my son. She comes to our house a lot when you aren't around, he answered. I was convinced that he was having an affair. After putting Steve to bed, I packed as many of mine and Steve's belongings as I could into boxes and suitcases. I decided to leave once my son woke up. As I packed, tears welled up in my eyes. Brian didn't contact me presumably thinking I was still abroad. 
The next morning, I stuffed the car full of our belongings and went to my parents' house. Where are we going, mommy? Steve asked curiously. We're going to visit grandma's house, was all I told him. My parents' house is about a 20-minute drive away. My father passed away a few years ago, and my mother is now living alone. She was surprised by the sudden arrival, but after dropping off her belongings and leaving Steve with her, I headed for the city office to get a divorce application. I returned home, left the divorce papers and my wedding ring, and wrote him a note. I cannot stay with someone who makes Steve sad. Divorce me. Wishing you happiness with Mandy. And then I returned to my parents' house. When I arrived, my son was taking a nap, and my mother was furious when I explained the situation. She knew Brian since high school, and she kept saying, I never thought he would do such a thing. He is so kind and serious. After Steve woke up from his nap, we three went out for a meal. I chose a restaurant known for its delicious hamburgers, Steve's favorite. Watching him happily munching on his hamburger, I knew I had to protect him. After the meal, we returned home and my phone rang. It was Brian. I'm sorry for lying. Please come back. I was actually visiting a college friend who was in a hospital after an accident. I asked my mom to take care of Steve. He said, obviously lying. I felt cold towards him, so I played a little mean and asked, Is this college friend named Mandy? He feigned ignorance. Huh? Who's Mandy? Steve was crying when I came home. I don't want to be with someone who makes him cry. I want a divorce and I'm not coming back to that house. He pleaded. Please reconsider. I rushed out because my friend had an accident. It's true that I asked my mom to take care of Steve. I'll call you again. And he hung up. I felt like everything he said was a lie and I'm pretty sure it was all a lie. But he seemed to think he could still deceive me. After that, I commuted to work from my parents' house, and in exchange for giving her living expenses, my mother cut back on her part-time work hours to take care of Steve. She seemed to enjoy being with her grandson, telling me with joy, Steve was such a good boy today. It seems like he made new friends at the nearby park. Brian would call almost daily, spewing lies and apologizing. I consistently told him, My mind is set on divorce, so stop calling me. He even came to my parents' house once while I was at work, but my mother sent him away. The divorce proceedings weren't moving forward, so I decided to go to a detective agency. I wanted decisive evidence of his affair. A few days later, the agency reported that Brian was spending nearly every day with a woman in her early 20s. They had taken many pictures, and it seemed she was also frequently visiting the house where I used to live. I was convinced that this woman was the Mandy that Steve had mentioned. Even as he was begging me to come back, it seemed he was having fun with this lover. I couldn't believe he could do something so despicable. I wondered what happened to the sincere man he used to be. One weekday night, I finished my work early, took the pictures I received from the detective agency, and went to the house where Brian was living. As I walked into the living room, I found him and the woman from the pictures watching a movie together. The woman shrieked loudly at the sight of me and clung to Brian. Jesus, who the hell is she? She scared me! Brian looked so surprised that he seemed to be speechless. I want to finalize the divorce soon, but the process isn't moving forward, so I came here. 
Could both of you sit down here? Both he and the woman sat at the dining table silently. The woman was making a fuss, but when I told her to sit down quickly, she sat quietly. It's, uh, it's not what you think. She's my sister-in-law. He tried to lie again. Oh, God, you don't have a sister, Brian. Enough with the lies. I had a detective agency take photos, but they seem meaningless. This is Mandy, right? The one you left Steve for and went on a trip with that day? When I said this, they were silent for a while. Will you answer me? It's fine if we get divorced, right? When I pressed them further, he gave up and began to speak with a resigned look on his face. It's your fault for not being with Steve. I only left him for a day. How many days have you been away? He retorted. I was genuinely surprised. My work was indeed busy and I had many business trips, but I always talked to him about them. If he was unhappy, I think I could have cut back on my work. Didn't I discuss it with you? He always said it was fine. I couldn't say no to that. He might have been holding back, but that doesn't justify leaving a four-year-old child alone at home and having an affair. I don't want him to equate my leaving Steve and his care for work with that. So that makes it okay for you to cheat? To leave Steve alone at home and go on a trip? At my words, he sighed deeply and said, I'm not interested in you, who's always working. She's different from you. She's family-oriented and always puts me first. Steve's even attached to her. I don't mind divorcing, but we'll be the ones to raise him. It's not a lie that I asked my mom to take care of him that day. I also sighed deeply and made a call. Hello? You can come in now. He looked puzzled. The woman was still looking down. There was a few minutes of silence. Then the intercom rang and I went to the front door to meet her. The one I called was my mother-in-law. When Brian saw her, his mouth fell open in surprise. Tell us, did Brian ask you to take care of Steve that day? When I asked, she said, No, he didn't ask me anything like that. That's what I thought. I can't leave Steve with someone who lies like that. Hey mom, I asked you, didn't I? My husband appealed to his mother in a panic. What the hell do you think you are doing? Aren't you ashamed of yourself? How can you lie in front of your son like that? Alicia told me everything. I am not on your side. She stated clearly. Before coming to this house, I had gone to her place, told her everything, and asked for the truth. The mother-in-law, who had experience in raising children and had been taking good care of my son, was quite surprised that a four-year-old child had been left alone at home and apologized to me. When I told her that I wanted to get a divorce and asked for her cooperation, she readily agreed. You too, Mom? Fine. Let's go to court. I'll get Steve. He said until the end, but I told him to do as he pleased and left the house with my mother-in-law. When I thanked her, she said, It's a request from you, whom I've known since high school. Of course I'll help you. I'm sorry about my son. I'll help you with the trial and everything after that. I couldn't help but hug her while crying. Thank you so much. <laughs> I feel so frustrated. It's okay. Alicia, 
You've had a hard time, too. I felt saved by her kind words. I drove her home and cried my heart out in the car alone while listening to my favorite music. I can't cry in front of my son, so I wanted to let out all my tears here. Once I finished crying, I felt much better. I decided in my heart to protect my son with all my strength. After that, the trial began. I knew I would win without trying, but Brian insisted on a trial. The divorce was granted easily, and I got custody of my son. The decisive proof of his affair played a big role. I was truly glad I went to the detective agency. I heard from my lawyer that my husband's mistress was a receptionist at the same company. Since it's a small company, the rumors spread quickly and she was forced to leave the company. Brian is still working there, but he's having a hard time and he's soon to be transferred to a subsidiary. Even after his transfer was decided, he still wanted to get married, but she firmly refused. Her parents even stepped in to refuse him, which surprised him. I'm seeking damages from both of them. I think they should pay for the pain that my son and I endured. My son and I are living happily with my mother in my hometown. I thought about reducing my work, but my mother quit her part-time job to take care of housework and Steve while I'm away. It's her own decision because she wants to spend as much time as possible with her grandson. In return, I decided to pay for all living expenses for my salary. I have been on a business trip abroad and got a promotion and a raise at just the right time, so I'm able to support my family adequately. I pamper my son as much as I can when I come home from work, which I love. Sometimes I scold him, but I'm very happy to spend time with my son who is growing every day. There's no chance that my son will be left alone at home in the future. Since we started living at my parents' home, I've never seen my son cry out of loneliness. I want to continue to watch my son grow with my mother.